Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. We're going to wait for the others. Probably they will connect in a while. <clears throat> Let's see. How was your day today, guys? Was it busy? Did you do a lot of things? I'm very busy. Are you? Very busy. Okay. Teacher. And, yeah. To, uh, a question. To say, if I want to say, uh, for un día tranquilo, a quiet day, is that okay? Oh, no, no, no. If you say a quiet day, is because you mean that the, the place where you were working, it was quiet. Oh, pero, uh, 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 un día tranquilo? You can, you can simply say it was a very relaxing day. That's oh, okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Tomorrow, guys, is going to be our last class. And uh, today I will try to, you know, to resolve or to explain in case you have any doubt regarding to anything that we have seen throughout the, you know, throughout the, the module. So let me just verify here. Well, welcome to the ones that just connected. Let's see. All right, so, well, it's really good that today we have more people that we usually have, like, at eight. That's good. Let me just, I'm just trying to, to
to do something in here, but it's not letting me do that. I don't know why. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so um, let's start. Let me just go ahead and share my screen so we can start with the idioms for today. And let me... Okay. Oh my God, why is it not working? Oh my God, okay, here we go. Mm. Can you see something or no, Ryan? Can you, oh. No yet? I can see. Oh, okay. can you now? No. Now I can see your, your whiteboard. Oh. Yes, teacher. We can see. All right. So, uh, teacher, this. Can you hear me, teacher? Yeah, loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So now let's see. Uh, does any one of you has any idea what do we want to say when we say something like that, or have you ever heard this ex expression like before, in a movie? in a book or something like that or you have no idea at all remember this is an idiom so we are not going to translate it literally otherwise it won't make sense do you have never or you have not no idea no idea okay well <clears throat> if you have ever wondered like uh how do we say uh, like uh, like the expression that we have in Spanish, for example, when we want to say, hablamos de eso después, that for example, um, we could easily say like, let's talk about that later. We can say that, okay. Yeah, that's, that's something good. But if you want to have to use an idiomatic phrase, which is this one, it's like we will say, we'll cross that bridge when you come to it or when we come to it, which means vamos a hablar de eso después, okay? Because um, we don't, we had an issue or we had a problem and we don't want to talk about that situation right now. That's pretty much when we, when we are going to use it. Now, remember, as I said, this is like, uh, vamos a hablar de eso luego. This is an idioms. It means that if you say that, like, let's talk about that later, that's completely understandable and that's completely fine. I'm not saying that that is not correct. That's good. But if you want to use the idioms, this is what we have to use to say exactly the same thing. Now, let's see, uh, Daisy, let me listen to you. Just repeat it. So Daisy? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, repeat it. Well. Well. We, we, we. Will, okay. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, Francisco Alberto. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, well, Rose, that bridge when we come to hit. Okay, Rosemary. Good evening. Good evening. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Alejandro. We'll 
will cross will cross that bridge when we come to it. Already, Nadia. Yeah. We'll cross the bridge when we come it. Okay. Uh, Noemi. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, let me see. I really don't know where. Okay, here we go. Now let's see um, Filomena. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Cesar. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Now let's see. Wendy, hey there. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay. We all cross that bridge when we come to it. And Janira. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And arriving. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Has any one of you not participated yet? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, good. Have you ever heard, like, uh, if I tell you something like jeet chat? What do you guys understand? G chat. Have you ever heard? I don't that? know. Teacher. I don't know, teacher. Mm, anyone? <clears throat> no. G chat. Like for example, I ask you, arrive in G chat. No idea. Okay. So that is something uh, when it comes to pronunciation, very advanced pronunciation, let's say. When uh, Americans tell you that expression like G jet, they want to say. Did you eat jet? So they say. G jet. You probably, uh, you have probably heard that expression and you didn't quite understand it. This is like very advanced pronunciation. Like, for example, let me listen to this pronunciation. Let's see, uh, Wendy, let me listen to that pronunciation. <clears throat> Um, I know, pretty sure. At that, okay. I don't know, Al Alejandro. That, <laughs> okay. Uh, arriving, Daryl, Janira, Daryl, Daisy, Dad. Arturo. Dado. Filomena. Dado. And Jenny. <clears throat> Jenny, welcome back, by the way. I didn't see you yesterday here. Yes, I can. I can start in the class yesterday. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't start okay. in the class. Okay. okay. All right. So how do we say this? Uh, maybe doll. Doll, okay. We say that'll, that'll, that'll. That's how we say it. So that'll. remember, this is like more, these expressions are very commonly used when you're having a conversation with an American. 
And remember, Americans do not like to speak that much. And that's the reason why they always use a lot of translations. Like for translation, I mean contractions. That's what I mean. Now, do you know what's the contraction like uh, for this? Like the most common one? Contraction for that. I gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay. Nevertheless, we have another one which is even smaller. We say I'm a. So that's exactly the same thing as if you say I am going to. So let's suppose that I say something like this what am i saying i'm going to go to the park with my family i am going to go or i'm going to go to the park with my family but you see i'm a go to the park with my family so those yeah go ahead I know that, for example, vacation, the right pronunciation is vacation, right? Vacations, yeah. Vacation, okay. And mm -hmm. family is family or family? Family. family? family. Family. With a short A, family. No, it's not family. It's like, like, uh, like family. Family. Okay. family. It's like if family. you open your mouth, like if you're saying the letter A, like A, but instead of saying the letter A, you say the letter E, like family, family, family. exactly, yeah. <clears throat> teacher, excuse me, teacher. Yeah. What's hmm? the meaning uh, of the first sentence? First, uh, you mean this one? Yes. So uh, what's the meaning of that one, guys? Hablaremos de eso después. Hablaremos de eso después, exactly. It's like, for example, yeah, like, <laughs> let's suppose, like, uh, I I had an argument with you, Janira. Like, we were, you know, saying very bad words, like, uh, you seen, you know, we had our situation going on. And then I tell you, you know what, Janira, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's like, if I'm telling you, let's talk about that later. It's similar to that, with the difference that if you say, let's talk about that later. It's like a common language. But if you say, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, you're using idioms, like you're using native uh, expressions of the language. That's the only difference. Nadia, yeah, what's your question? Hi, teacher. Um, in my case, I don't understand the last exercise the, that I am, what is the mean? I am in the last sentences. I don't understand this this example, teacher. Uh, and, you and, mean and you mean two, this one? And this this word and contraction word mm -hmm. is only for in, informal communication or formal too. No, remember that that's that's only uh, n let's say not informal communications, but uh, like the common language like if you go to united states you like most of the time i are, are going to listen to people using contractions nevertheless there are some people that never they never use contractions they don't like doing that they will they will talk to you like in a very formal way so it's it's up to you pretty much it does not mean that if you're speaking in this way it's like uh bad or if you're speaking in this way it's good no i mean it's one make you sound more professional like uh okay you're speaking the language without any contraction and the other one is like more common like uh, if we're talking and I know you, you know me, and we want to have a conversation and we don't really care about what we're saying. We, we're just uh, just speaking a language and that's what we're doing. In that way, we can use those contractions. Yeah. Teacher, excuse me. 
Go ahead. Um, in the second one, did you eat yet? What's the meaning? Did, did you eat yet? Is a uh, Jacomistes? Mm. Yeah, and this is what Americans. It's not an expression. I'm sorry, what? It is not a, an expression. No, uh, what I was saying here is that uh, instead of saying, did you eat oh, jet, Americans okay. say, jet jet. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. that's what they say, jet jet. So okay. it's like, okay, that's what they okay. say. Now, today, guys, we are going to have like uh, different examples regarding to what we saw yesterday. And I will try to resolve any doubt regarding to everything we have seen throughout the module. Remember, tomorrow is going to be our last class and we are going to have the exam. So I hope, <laughs> don't make that face again. So I hope everyone is ready for that. Remember, it's going to be an oral exam, no written, not about that. Why? Because if we do it written, I'm pretty sure that you will go to Google Translator, that you will go to the Google or something, that you will look for the information. And of course, you will try to help yourself uh, out. But tomorrow is going to be more pronunciation. Okay? <clears throat> well, so with that being said, today we are going to go and try to understand about expressions or clauses stating reason and condition. And how are we going to do that? Based on uh, some of the conjunctions that we saw, for example, if I say unless, what do you guys understand by that? A menos que. A menos que. Let's see if that's the meaning of that one. Let me show you an example. And let's see if we all agree on that. Let me see. All right. So if I tell you, no, that's, no, let me see. Mm, I'll stop this thing here. And. I will write it here in the chat. It's way better, I guess. No. Jesus Christ, it, it that doesn't want me. Oh my God, it's not helping me today. <clears throat> well, let me do it in this way then. All right, let's see. It would say something like, let's see. I'm, I'm not going to say it because I want to listen to your pronunciation first. Alejandro. I, I'll be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Arriving. Uh, I'll be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Okay, Janira. I'll be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Okay, Arturo. With a comma, teacher. Okay. <laughs> Arturo? I'll be at the meeting unless I am I'm really busy. It is. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Wendy. I'll, I'll be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Okay, let's see, Rosemary. I'll be at the meeting unless I am really busy. Okay. Thank you. And Francisco. Hey. <clears throat> Sorry. I, I'll be at the meeting unless I'm really busy. Okay, now, this one, we said it, I'll, I'll be, I'll be at the meeting unless I'm really busy. Now, can someone tell me what are we trying to say? We say, I'll be at the meeting unless I'm really busy. 
What's the meaning of that in Spanish? Estar en la reunión al menos que esté ocupado. Exactly. Now, when it comes to pronunciation, let me listen to you arriving. These parts, these, all the contractions that we have in here. I'll, you'll, she'll, he'll, they'll. So let me write this down in here. Now, uh, Wendy. I'll, you'll, she'll, he'll, they'll. Okay, let's see, uh, Jenny. I'll, you'll, she'll, he'll, they'll. Okay. Uh, let's see, Maritza. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, I am. Mm -hmm. Jewel. She. He. He. They. Okay, let me ask you a question, guys. Do you guys think that we pronunciate the same thing when we say this one in here and this one in here? Do you guys think that is the same pronunciation? Uh, Sounds like it's Colina. It's similar, but, but it's a little different. The first is hill, hill and the second word is heel. So what about this one? Sounds like they are homo homophones. So do you guys, yeah, Nadia? I'm sorry, teacher. Oh, okay, no problem. So do you guys think that we pronounce them the same way? Yes. Raise the second your... one, I okay. think it's heel. Okay. And the third one is heel. I think it's a longer E. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that, that's a good try, man. Now, let's see. Raise your hand if you think that the three of them are pronunciated differently. Okay, Jenny. I think. You think that they are pronunciated differently. Okay. Different, yes. Okay. So the others means, it means that you think that they are the same, the same pronunciation for the three of them. I'm not sure. Okay. This one. How do we say the pronoun by itself, the pronoun, how do we make the pronunciation? He. 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 Like E. Exactly. Like he. So this he. one we say hill. That's he. that's okay. Hill. We only uh, add to that pronunciation for the pronoun by itself, the, the, the double L. Hill. That's it. Now, how do we say this one? Maybe high. Hill. Heel. We say heel. 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 And this one we say heel. Heel. So the pronunciation is the same. Say heel, heel, heel. What does it mean? So how are you going to understand the difference? And the you're context. going, of course, that's it. <clears throat> so you might think like, but teacher, how am I supposed to understand the difference when someone is talking to me in that way? For example, I can tell you, like, he'll go or he'll visit the hill when he heals his leg. What did I say? Can you repeat it, teacher, please? He'll visit the hill when he heals his leg. El visitará la colina cuando él sane. 
Do the others agree? Yes. Listen to me. He'll visit the hill when he heals his leg. Eh, visitará la colina cuando él sane su pierna. Do the others agree? Yes. Yes, teacher. Él visitará la colina. Él visitará la colina cuando, cuando. Hasta ahí entendí. Ok. Ok. At, at least we understood something. But as you can see, my point of doing that is make you like or trying that you listen to the difference and the context is helping you like to understand, to have a different idea that even though all words can, uh, sound similar, you have the idea that they are not talking about the same thing, right? Because if you say, he'll visit the hill, even though it sounds like, oh, he's saying the same thing, but I'm not, right? Why? Because the context is giving me a different idea. Yeah. Do we understand, guys? It's it's kind of clear? Yeah, all clear. Yeah, like, sure. Already, now. For tomorrow, since is the exam, we are going to have the last tongue twister. And this is going to be. So I want you to take notes if you want to. How much wood? <laughs> no, that's not the one we're going to use today. <laughs> How much wood would a wood chuck chuck? <laughs> but that was good though that was good now this is the one that we're going to have for tomorrow i will not make the pronunciation myself that's going to be up to you okay i just want you to study and that's going to be part of the oral evaluation for tomorrow i can just tell you like a, the pronunciation of one word but not all of it okay so, um, <clears throat> uh, I just want you to take notes of that and then I will erase it because we were talking about, like, you know, the conjunctions that we have. And since we have this one, oh, let me see, I, I, I will list this. Okay, we were talking about unless. And I guess we all have or we all understand what is the meaning of that one. What's the meaning? A menos, a menos que. que. Okay. A menos que. We're right. Now we go to. We already saw this one. So this might not be difficult. What's that? Solo si. Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I say. En caso de. Solo en caso. Solo en caso. Por si acaso. Por si acaso. ¿Quién da más? Eh. What do you guys understand if we say just in case? En caso que. So... Solo mm. en ese caso. Solamente. 2027. Mm -hmm. Solo en ese caso. Solo en ese caso. Okay. Now, we're going to, por si acaso, we're going to leave it like that. What about this one? Ahora que. Okay, now, let me give you some exercises in which I will want you to use all of any one of these ones. Let me just stop sharing my screen here and let me send you these ones. What about if I say as long as? Tan pronto como. Mm -hmm. Let me send you this one. It will be on the meeting chat. Okay, this is the one. 
that we have. And what do you guys think is the best option? I will give you this option. Unless, just in case, I will give you um, now that, and only if, even if. What do you think is the best option? I repeat it. Unless, even if, as long as, just in case. I think only, it's only if. Only if. Okay. I, I think it's just in case. Okay, just in case. Let's try with the with arriving's answer. If we say, I will be at the meeting only if. Oh, no, that's not the one I was looking for. Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's one. Let me just see. This, is, this My computer doesn't want to work with me today. Okay, so arriving. He said uh, only if. I will be at the meeting only if I'm not busy. If we say something like only if, what are we saying? Mm -hmm. Que estará en la reunión solo si no está ocupado. Okay, if we use what, what, who else said something? Yanira, did you say something or was Philomena? I, I didn't. Or Patricia, who said something? Unless. Unless. Now, let's try with that one. I will be at the meeting unless, oh. I will be at the meeting. Oh, that letter A, never mind. Uh, don't pay attention to that letter A in there. I will be at the meeting unless I'm not busy. Do you do you guys think that that's, that's okay? Mm. All of them are possible. Only if. Only if, okay. Only if. If, if we say only if, we'll only. be like, only if will be what arriving said. Now, all the ones that you said, guy, like only if, plus the other one that was unless, I will be at the meeting only if I'm not busy. I will be at the meeting unless I'm not busy. Why do you think that both of them are correct? Both of them are correct because we are using these two to give a condition. So every single time that we use something to give a condition, it doesn't really matter which one do we use. We only have to think about the context and the context will give you the idea. So if we use either only if or unless, both of them will be correct, okay? Now, I completely understand, or do you guys have any question regarding to what we saw? The previous days, like conjunctions or something like that, is there anything that you would like to know or something that you do not remember, Nadia? Uh, teacher, I don't understand what is the meaning, just in case. Just in case, okay. What's the meaning of just in case? We come back to the same question. Mm -hmm. Guys. Solo en caso si fuera, de... Si fuera el caso. Okay, let me write an example to you here in the chat. And let's try to take a look and think about what we're trying to say. If I say I asked Tim to take notes just in case I can go to the meeting. En caso de... In caso de o en caso que. That's it. So if I say I asked Tim to take notes just in case I can go to the meeting, what am I saying? Que le pidió a Tim que tome notas en caso que él no pueda ir a, a la reunión, creo. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Now, let me, we're going to have a practice today, which is regarding to listening. What is going to be this about? I need you guys to have pen, pencil, or paper with you. 
I will read a small paragraph and what I want you to do is write down everything I'm going to say. If there's any word that you didn't understand, just leave a blank space, okay? Leave a blank space. You know what, what that is, a blank space? Yep. Espacio en blanco. Okay, yeah. Let me see. I have the paragraph in here. <clears throat> Let me see. Okay. Here we go. Are you guys ready? I think so. So I will try to do it like in the regular. I will try to do it like if I'm writing, okay? I will try to do it in my way. So relax, chill. I will do it like we're going to repeat it twice. The first time, just pay attention to what I'm saying. Only listen. Okay, only listen to me and pay attention and try to understand what I'm saying. Second time, I will try to read it slowly and then you start writing it down. Do you understand what I mean? Or do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, teacher. Okay, let's go. Pollution is the biggest problem facing the modern man. All advancements becomes useless if a man does not get the very basic necessity of life. That is fresh air. And only trees can do this service to man unluckily. If I ask you now, randomly, from one to 10, how much were you able to understand? Honest. Teacher, I was struggling between writing and understanding. Um, but I understood that pollution mm -hmm. is a big problem and the, it's the biggest uh, and to solve the that problem, we need fresh air. I okay. Think. So, according to you, from what you just heard, from 1 to 10, how much do you think that you understood? From the bottom of my heart. <laughs> from the bottom of your heart. Yes. Uh, six, teacher. Six. Okay, that was good. What about the others? I, I understand only one. Only... Only first sentence. The first sentence. Okay. What about the others? Um, for me, I I understand all, but writing, I have I had problem. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So imagine that you are studying English because you are working in a company that requires you to speak the language. And they tell you, oh, you know what? I know that you speak English, so let's go ahead and write up a, a document. And you're like, oh my God, I can speak, but I cannot write. Yep, I will die. So think Teacher, about that's my biggest problem because I understand that uh, almost everything you say, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to me because I don't know how to write some words that's that's completely understandable and that's why in english we have four skills listening speaking writing and uh, i'm sorry the what Pronunciation, those are the four skills that we have to be ready for. Now, let's try to do it the second time. And of course, I will give you space to write as if I am writing myself, okay? So, what I want you to do after this, go ahead and send me the proof on the WhatsApp group. 
And with that, if you got, let's do, let's do a deal. Let's make a deal. If you get at least 90% or 85 from 80 to 90% correctly, I will give you one point for tomorrow's exam. From 80% to 90%. Is that a deal? Yeah, we have a deal. I agree. So, was only Arturo, arriving and Alejandro, and the others? Is that a deal? I agree. I agree, teacher. You agree, okay? Remember, we don't use the verb to be for it, saying estoy de acuerdo. We say I agree. We never say I am agree or something like that. That's not that's not good English, okay? Good. Now let's go. It's in the simple present. I'm sorry, what? In the simple present. That's uh, it is a simple presence, teacher. Yeah, I Go agree. Ahead. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. Ready or not, here we go. Pollution is the biggest problem. Facing the motor man. Period. All advancement becomes useless if a man does not get The very, very basic necessity of life. The very basic necessity of life. Period. Pollution is not fresh air. Period. Only trees can do this as part of nature. Mm -hmm. 
Can you repeat, please? No. That's that's going to be difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. Sorry. So let's continue. And this. will not help to humans unlikely and this will not help humans unlikely I can hear you, teacher. Oh, sorry, that was my bad, thank you. Now, uh, that's it, period. Then go ahead and take a screenshot or take a picture of what you just wrote and go ahead and send it through the WhatsApp group now. Let Sí, I already got Ricardo, Regina, oh no, that's not, Ali, I don't know who's Ali, who are you? Ali, is that you, Alejandro? I don't know if he's the one. Yes, teacher. Oh, okay, okay, we got Ricardo, we got Patricia, we got Javernal, who are you? Have a uh, This is me, teacher. Oh, Arturo, okay. Araceli, we got JVR. I don't know who's JVR. So what I'm going to do is that I will be texting you all individually. Why? Because some of you, I don't know your names because your name are not in here. For example, JVR, I don't know who JVR is. Era, I guess that's arriving, my guess, but I don't know. Wendy Moreno, yeah, I have I have her here. Hi, I don't know who Hi is. Jara Mendoza, I'm guessing that's gonna be Janira. Jenny, Isabella, I don't know who Isabella is because I don't see any Isabella in here. So I don't know who, who are you, Isabella? Or you just crack whatever. Maritza. Oh, okay. Maritza, okay. Then I can see like a little uh, pigeon. I don't know. Daisy. All right. Now, let me ask you, Wendy, in your personal opinion, how did you feel with this practice? <clears throat> um, really, teacher, I understand a lot, but. My biggest problem is talk and grammar. Grammar, okay. What about you, Jenny? What is your feeling of regarding to this situation? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Not at all. Any opinion that you have? About the pollution is the bigger problem. I agree with this. Mm -hmm. With these um, sentences. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh. Now, let me ask you every single time that I said period, what is period for you? Punto y final. Punto. 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 
That's good to know. That's good to know. Why? Because I remember like a group before you guys, when I said period, they wrote period <laughs> on the paragraph. <laughs> so what if I say column? What's that? Punto y seguido. Punto y seguido. Mm. The colon and semicolon. Um, what about semicolon? Uh, uh, semicolon, punto y coma. Uh, yeah, so what? What's what's column? Um. Um. Uh, punto también. No, no, teacher. This is new for me. So they, you didn't see like exclamation points or ex like uh, at the beginning or something. So how did you know that period is period? Because of the pronunciation. And because like... a lot of Americans used to use that word. Okay, that's yes. good. What, I, I, how do how do we say guión um, en medio? Slash? No. Slash? No. No, I don't know, teacher. This is new for me. This is a new topic for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so slash is something like this. That's slash. What's that? Leca. Leca. Correct. So that's slash. But when we say guión medio, hmm. let me spell it for you. D A S H. D S H. D A S H. Dash. Dish. Dash. Dash. Dish. No. Dash. Dish is a Maya. dish. No, dash. dash. Dash, okay. Now, how do we say guión bajo? Low dash. <laughs> no, that. That, was, <laughs> that was a good try. <laughs> it was talking by logic, and that's what Salvadorians do. Like we automatically make sentences out of out of nothing. That that was good, but no, we didn't say low dash. We say underscore. 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 Like now, let Joy me ask, teacher. <laughs> like what? It. Sounds like two words, but they, they are just one. Just one. U-N-D-E-R-S-C-O-R-E, -E, underscore. Underscore. Now, let's imagine that you have to give your email to an American. Let's see. Uh, let me listen to Navia. Give me your email address. And uh, Nadia. Uh huh. Isolina. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh huh. Let's go with Wendy. Wendy, what's your email, Wendy? <laughs> I don't know how to say arroba. So. Okay, now let's go with Alejandro. What's your email address? Okay, is. A L E Q U I N C A N I Aroa. Aha. Jenny. Jenny, go ahead. Let's go with you, Jenny. Okay, my email is Lausothi. Mm -hmm. That at that at, at Gmail period com. Period com, okay. Now let me listen to you. Let's see, Filomena. Let's go with you. What's your email address, Filomena? Um, it is Anam mm -hmm. ninety eight ninety six seven mm -hmm. dot uh, gmail dot com. 
Okay. Arriving. The same problem, teacher. I don't know how to say arroba, but it's... I know how to say the rest. You see? Arriving. Mm -hmm. Arroba <laughs> gmail.com. <laughs> Okay, you see, you see, that's something very, very important that someone will ask you, like, what's your email address? Or remember, if they ask you, what's your Instagram user or something like that? Sometimes in the Instagram users, they, they have an underscore. You didn't know how to say underscore. Now you know how to say, oh, you know what? This, this, and this, and that. Underscore, this, this, and that. Or if you have a dash, now you say, oh, it's this and this and that, dash, this and this and that. Or now, if they ask you, like, uh, for a website, like, for example, www dot blah, 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 slash, da, da, da. You see? It's very important to know that, guys. That's very, very basic information. Now, let's pay attention to my email address. Nelson, U-E-S, at gmail.com. Dot com. Dot com. It's, it's not at it's it's arroba. That. Arroba, exactly. Just at. At. A-T, that's it. So every single time, now you know, if someone asks you, arroba, at. Like uh, like the same pronunciation as the preposition of time at, you see. Now tell me your uh your email, Wendy. What's your email address? Okay, my email address address is brownie twenty first at gmail .com. Excellent. There you go. Now, let me let me uh, tell you something. What is the difference if you want to say uh, in English, we can say if I say uh, I will address this letter to this address. What am I saying? I will address this letter to this address. Is there a difference between Address and address? Designar y dirección. Oh. Exactly. Designar o destinatario o destinar. And then address is dirección. Address, address. Pay attention to those little details, guys. Those little pronunciations can make a huge difference in English. Okay? So... Mm -hmm. Before so address is like a subject, uh, like a noun, and, and address is the verb. It's the verb, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go, guys, is there any question regarding to what we are going to do tomorrow, since it's going to be our last day? Oh, teacher. Mm -hmm. In my, in my house, tomorrow there will be no electricity science morning at nine. Uh, Do you mean scenes or science, like ciencia? Science. Ciencia? Scenes. No, scenes. Okay, scenes. Scenes uh, for tomorrow. I try connect to the class. It's, uh, it's only... Surf zone in San Salvador. Surf zone. Oh, you mean the like uh, the surf yeah. zone, like it's zone. San, San Marcos. Oh, uh, I see. Este, San, una San, San Salvador. Mm. Santiago. Santiago, oh. Texacuango, Santo Tomás. Oh, I see. It's I understand. Surf zone. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you for letting me know someone else has any situation similar to that one. Do not lie to me because, you know, that's your last chance to show me what you're made of, okay? And why you're here. So, no questions at all regarding to what we're going to do tomorrow? No, just... Just that we need more classes with you, teacher. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Me too, me too I teacher. Am. I am. 
I don't know. I am you... with an item because you learn more. You teach too much. Uh, you I... go further than the others because yeah. most of the teachers just uh, help us with the platform, but they don't give us tips. They don't give us extra information, and that's something that I want to thank you because oh. you go further and. I've learned a lot in this module, teacher. Oh, uh, that's that's my goal. And thank you very much for those words, guys. I try to do my best. And remember that every single teacher has like a different way to, you know, to teach. In my case, I always like my classes to be in this way. Even though if you are basic, I will always do the same thing. Why? Because I put myself in your feet. Well, I like try to do my classes is like if I were if I were you like when I was in that situation. Like I remember I wanted to have like a teacher who was able to give me more information because you know you're willing to learn the language and those little tips help you to improve a lot. So um I really don't know if I'm going to be with you for the next module, since that is something related to Inglés Corporativo. Um, but if they give me the opportunity to continue with you, we're going to be here once again, and we will. I will push a little bit more on you, okay? But that's every single time something that will help you. So uh, if there's no any other question regarding to that, please do not forget to study the tongue twister, which is all, the only thing that I'm going to ask you for tomorrow, plus that we have the exam. If something happens for tomorrow, I need you to be really honest with me and don't lie to me. Why? Because it's going to be your last opportunity, okay? Try to do your best. It's not going to be that difficult. Well, I will try not to be that hard on you. But um, it's an exam. So that's that's all I can say. Okay. So um, hope to see you all tomorrow. Hope everyone uh, is going to be ready for, for tomorrow. And well, that's the only thing I want to say. Thank you very much for being here today and attending to the class. So have a good night, you all. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Yeah, did someone say something? No? No, right. Okay, bye.